So, Missions Sunday, I wanted to kick it off with some, some big facts about 2023 uh, missions here in, in Spring Hill. I don't have notes, so I'm going off the slides there. So the first number, we had 67 people that participated in a mission trip this year. So let's, let's isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? I'm really, really, really excited about this next fact. So 21 people went on their first mission trip this year at Spring Hill. Isn't that awesome? Awesome. And then if you total up all of our miles that were traveled for the sake of the gospel this year, we traveled over 100,000 miles. And this includes uh, the Kimbros who went uh, to, to the Middle East this year. Uh, this includes uh, Sam Martin who went to Brazil this year. So if you, you take all of Spring Hill miles for the sake of the gospel, we traveled over 100,000 miles this year. So that's awesome, isn't it? And this is uh, this is the perfect attendance award. We're um, we're celebrating we're celebrating uh, Noel, Peru, and and the Memphis mission trip. And for those three trips, I didn't realize it until this morning. I was riding into to uh, to church with my daughter Augusta, and she said, "Did you realize that Jess Falky went on all of these mission trips?" So there's the perfect attendance award. Th thank you, Jess Falky. All right. I'm going to invite Max up. He's going to give us our focus verse for the week. As we continue our time of worship, um, I'd like for you to stand with me as we look at our verse for this week. And if you will stay, say this with me, if you'll notice that there are four things that we're going to be talking about. And in just a moment, we're going into a time of prayer. I'd like for you to also pray through those four things. But uh, we'll begin this verse now. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry, 2 Timothy 4, 5. And we are going into a time of corporate worship, and the altars will be open here for you. And Zane and, and Corey McCurry will be down here along with myself to, and others that will be uh, willing to pray with you as, as we open up this time of prayer. Also remember uh, to pray for Pastor Jared and his family as he goes on sabbatical uh, beginning this week. And uh, you'll notice in there, week one, praying for a refreshment from the Lord and for his heart and for his mind. So if you will, uh, just use this as a time of prayer. You may want to sit in your own seat and pray, or you may want to just join in a time of other cooperate uh, as we cooperate together in prayer. So let's go to the Lord in prayer now.
our time of testimonies now. So just to kind of let you know how this will work is we're going to go through them one at a time. We'll do Memphis first. So kind of chronologically as they occurred, uh, Memphis and then Noel and then Peru. So we'll show a video on it and then we'll have somebody kind of give you a little bit of an overview and then you'll get to hear a couple people's uh, testimony. So just thinking about scripture where it says um, we can't help but to testify about what we've seen and heard. And so I hope today you're encouraged to hear how our church has been active in sharing the gospel. I believe in missions, and I know you believe that as well. I also believe in these short-term trips because for many people, it's a first taste of them getting to do something. Uh, we have people who are coming to our church now because somebody went on our Night of Hope for the first time before Easter. And so they, they got to invite somebody who now is coming to our church and is very connected, just thinking that's one of the things we want to do as a church is provide people not only with opportunities to be faithful in every field, but with the first opportunity to be faithful in every field. And so for many people, as you've heard, this year was uh, some of their first trips, so we'll hear from a whole host of different people. So you've heard enough from me. We'll get started, and we'll show the Memphis video.
All right, I'll invite the team up to stand with us. Come on up. Okay, so it, I, I promise you we just didn't sit in a classroom the whole time. I, I realize a lot of those shots were us sitting in trainings, but uh, an overview of Memphis. Not all of our team was able to, to come. We have some students that live out of state, so unfortunately they weren't able to, to make it this morning. But so we, uh, it was a quick trip. We spent four days out, and uh, we, we served in two different churches. So we left here, and we, we actually were a part of a church that um, is like a house, house church movement there in, in the heart of Memphis. And so we, we, we just gave them a blank check, and we said, how can we serve you? And they said, honestly, if you can just help us minister, take the gospel to uh, the people in the area. And so we sit in a, a training that morning, you saw one of the pastors there um, just giving us a, a new gospel tool. So this is kind of cool. They, they created a, a gospel tool that um, many of you may have seen the stickers that we have, the three circles. There's a thousand ways to share the good news of Jesus. And they actually came up with a new gospel tool. And they said, what you can do is help us evaluate this tool. And so we, we learned the tool. Then we went out to Shelby Farms, which is a, a giant park there. And we engaged uh, just anybody and everybody uh, and was able to, to share the gospel using this new tool. And then we came back and we um, just kind of gave the, that pastor feedback on how well it, it, it worked. Um, so I, I think one of uh, Tyler might talk a little bit about that tool here in a second. So that was the first church that we served at. And then the second church was, is actually a Gospel Life Church. And that was just south of, of Memphis in Hernando, Mississippi, and a buddy of mine that I served in India with, he's actually going through the North American Mission Board and getting ready, or they, they're launching a new church start. And so we, it just the, the Lord worked out all the dates, but we were actually able to go and serve in, in his church doing similar things. We actually had flyers for the church, and we were having gospel conversations. He actually gave us uh, trained us with a, another gospel tool that we utilized uh, that next afternoon and just made the community aware that their, their church is starting and their church, you can pray for them. Uh, they're, they've kind of soft launched the thing, but the hard launch is going to be in does anybody remember that? September, August. Okay. Um, and yeah, we'll figure it out. August is uh, when they're really going to invite everyone to, to come. So if you guys would be praying for their church chart, again, it's, it's gospel life. They're meeting in a elementary school uh, in the cafeteria there, and uh, it's the demographics. They just need, they need uh, the hope of Christ there. So um, am I missing any details on, we got a puppy, that's not, not uh, but uh, other than that, that was a highlight of the trip. So I'm going to pass it to my wife. She wants to speak to just uh, what it meant to, to be able to take uh, our, our family on the trip. So I've had lots of things <laughs> kind of go through my head when, I, when Nick was like, I want you to share something. I was like, okay, we're going to do this. Um, so we've taken our kids on mission trips before, and we're a pretty good like roll with the punches type of family, but this trip was like an extra roll with the punches. So the first half of our trip, we were kind of uh, not told the schedule. And you know when you have kids and it's hot and you're staying in host homes and you have no idea who those people are and everyone's hungry all the time, like it's only going to go really well, right? <laughs> so I was really nervous as a mom because, you know, anyways. But um, man, the Lord was incredibly sufficient. And one of the biggest highlights was, especially with this crew, incredible people. My kids got to see how other people lived out the gospel, not just mom and dad. And then the other really great thing when it comes to family discipleship on this trip was my kids got to see me struggle, like getting nervous to share the gospel with this new tool. Like I was so nervous and Gus and Jess were with us and we kind of got to figure it out together. And so things that they don't get to see mom and dad do in everyday life, um, we kind of got to go through that on this trip together and to see my kids grow in their walk with the Lord. Um, 
just doesn't get much better than that as a mom and dad. So anyways, we got to share in the struggle and talk about it and just really deepen that family connection. Okay, Augusta, what did the Lord teach you on this trip? That God loves everybody everywhere and that I can start a conversation on my own anywhere. Awesome. Awesome. We're really proud of you, okay? Okay, Miss Maria, would you like to share? I'm going to stop blocking. Hi, I'm Maria. Um, so I just got to see the Lord move in this trip. Um, probably one of the most ways I got to see was just how he uses everybody's strength just to further his kingdom. Um, so there was a moment whenever we were um, trying out the new tool that we stopped um, a group of three guys and um, just getting to see everyone's strengths. So, like I got to talk to the little girl a little bit and Jesse Ann got to talk about fishing some. And um, so it was just fun to get to see like how anything can be used for um, the Lord's kingdom and just furthering that and how easy it is just to have a conversation. Um, and I was super nervous, and it was really encouraging to me. Like, Nick was there, and he just was like, hey, yeah, we're just spreading the love, and, like, how can we pray for you? And it's just that simple. In my head, it was my first mission trip. And so in my head, I was like, all right, I've got to, like, say everything perfectly, and everything has to go according to plan. Um, but that it was just there isn't a perfect way. It's just going and sharing and getting that message out there. Um, and then that also I got to bring that home with me and just having the conviction of wanting to go and share and tell um, people here as well, just because everyone, everyone needs Jesus. So um, that's how I've gotten to see the Lord work in my life through this mission trip as well. All right, so my name is Tyler. I'm going to kind of just piggyback off of just what she kind of said, because that was our first opportunity to actually get to use that tool, which I thought was an amazing tool. And I'll talk a little bit more and how that affected in my life. But for now, I just want to kind of talk a little bit just about the trip. But as she was mentioning before, it was really cool to see how God used all of our gifts in that situation of sharing the gospel. Because I remember Nick, he walked up, Nick being Nick, introduced himself, started off the conversation, and then I chimed in with him to sharing. And in that moment, we see them struggling with trying to get this fishing pole set up. Well, I'm awful at fishing. So long story short, the last time I went fishing was with my older brother. I broke two fishing poles, and then the third one I ended up throwing in the lake when I went to cast it. Let me tell you what, he was so mad. But like a father in the moment, he like he said, he nodded, he's like, okay, you know what? Thanks, man. Go sit in the truck. I was like, yeah, no problem. I like to say it was when I was in high school, actually, I was 21 years old when I did that. So that's what makes it worse, because in this moment, here they are, they're struggling with fishing. I'm super scared. I, like, I have no idea. But Jesse Ann, Maria, Mitch, all of them, they hopped right in. It was just really cool to build that relationship. And then also getting to share the gospel with them, telling about who Jesus was and I know even before we got on that trip, we were all pretty nervous and just kind of scared, like, oof, man, sharing the gospel with a stranger, man, that can be hard, but it was really cool to see how we really trusted in God, and I kind of think of just Proverbs 3, 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understandings. In that moment, I saw, like, all of my team really trusting in God and depending upon Him, and, man, it was just really cool to see that, that boldness come from them and just how God was working in our lives, so that's what I thought was really cool that I really took away on this trip. All right, thank you all for your prayers. We're going to let the next video roll and then the Noel team take it away.
We got to take 55 with us to Knoll, so I won't ask all of them to come up here on the stage, but if you did go to Knoll, would you just stand up real fast? That's awesome. All right, you can be seated. Thank you so much. If you are going to share in just a moment, if you want to make your way to the front, and that way uh, we can share those testimonies. If I could tell the story of Noel quickly, I would like to tell it from a viewpoint that I think Spring Hill would understand, because Spring Hill has a testimony that's very similar to Noel. So Spring Hill, what you see here today, in a large part, is because of a prayer that was offered on a roof by Charles Dixon. Back whenever we were in the old church, before it burnt down, Charles just had a really uh, big heart for uh, why aren't people being saved. And so if I could tell the story of Noel, I would tell it in the same way that about 10 years ago, uh, whenever I was pastoring at Buffalo Creek, we began to have a heart for Noel because we saw in that town about uh, 1,100 people spoke 13 different languages. There are people from all around the world that were coming there because of Tyson Chicken Plant. And so we started praying, Lord, is there a way we could do ministry there? There was a church there, First Baptist Knoll, that had four people in it. And without going into too many details about that story, they finally came to us and said, would you, would you help us? And so we got to send one of my good friends, Josh Manning, and his family to go there and be a pastor. He had a vision for those people. And so their church went from four people to six churches, six services, uh, no, five services in six languages. And so he said, there should be a church for every people group here. And so it's an amazing church. So they've got food pantry. They've got people from a bunch of different nations that are gathered there. So when we went, we did some events that were for the children. Then we did a uh, food pantry uh, that was just for the community. And then one of the things we did, that if you could imagine what it would be like to have six congregations of six different nationalities meeting in your church, we cleaned the church, which believe it or not, was a very useful thing to do. So if you could kind of think, again, this is kind of Spring Hill mindset. You guys used to do a thing called Camp Smoky, where they would do kind of like a large church retreat and go and get away. In many ways, that's kind of what this is. It's a chance for us to go that you could take your family. We could have a lot of time of fellowship at a campground. And then we also had a chance to go and serve. And so that's what they did. Everybody served either with cleaning or with food distribution. And then they served either with the basketball camp or with the Children's Backyard Bible Club. So I'll give some, I'm not sure who wants to go first. Allie, would you like to share first? All right, thank you, Miss Allie. So I'm Allie. Um, I got to serve with um, a lot of my family, fortunately. So Dina and Sean and um, my husband got to go and my children. Um, I think what I feel most about it is thankful, thankful for the church that they are so willing to help and it was such a big group and we were all over the place doing things um and then i got to make a lot of the food which felt really good because a lot of the people there um seemed to really enjoy that and want to eat and that was going on during the food pantry and then <clears throat> the camping was so fun it was such a good time to fellowship and um, i'm thankful i got to know the people in our church a little bit better um, i obviously don't know everyone and so i was thankful for that time with people like Lucinda and her husband, and um, I got to know people more personally. And um, I think that's good because when you know people better, you get to feel them more and pray for them. Um, sorry, I'm a little nervous. Um, I got to witness my daughter witnessing to people. Um, we went back to the campground and she wanted to play volleyball. So she was talking to them about what we were doing there during that, and she invited them to go to the Backyard Bible Club, and that was just so sweet to me um, to see her, because she's in such a good environment that she feels so comfortable that that's what she just knows to do in conversation is tell people about Jesus. Um, so yeah, it was a really good time, lots of good feelings. I'm excited to go back. I enjoyed it a lot. So the youth group also got to go on the trip, and we weren't camping necessarily. We stayed in the church uh, together, and so we kind of had a youth side to the trip. So I invited Lucas to share a couple things, and I just had him respond to a couple questions. So I'm just going to read those, and then you can respond to what you said, okay? So I just asked him to, how do you saw the Lord working on the mission trip and how the Lord moved in his life as a result of being on the mission trip? The first question? Uh, there's, I was helping with the basketball camp, 
so there's like a lot of kids that we could like talk to or whatever. So I saw them learning about God and like seeing his grace and stuff by like ways they could like see him doing stuff and see him moving and everything by like by like the illustrations Jared was saying or whatever. So yeah. Oh, and the second one is it showed me how like the youth and whatever we could go help a tiny church in a tiny town and that could like affect so many people and like get them to see what God can do and help them and stuff. Thank you. And so the part the part that Lucas can't share because it'd be bragging was this guy worked so hard. The 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 overall idea was that it was going to be like a camping retreat. I kind of forgot the retreat part of it for the youth group. So the youth, you all worked so hard. You guys really did a lot at, at, over the weekend. And so uh, you all had great attitudes. And Lucas really stood out to me, especially if you guys saw we were in that the, the clothing pantry thing up there. Um, it's like Goodwill if, like, Goodwill started donating their clothes to other places. And so um, I was kind of calling it bad will. Uh, which maybe just says something about, like, my privilege, okay? So I'm going to check that. But so it was hot. It was musty in there. And he just had such a great attitude about working up there. Lucas, you did a great job. This guy folded so many clothes, hung up so many clothes. Uh, we hung up so many clothes, we broke a, like, one of their shelves. I felt really bad about it. But these, these students just worked really hard. And so I wanted to shout all of them out. You guys did a great job. Lucas, you had a really great attitude and heart about it. You couldn't just say that. That would be weird. So I wanted to share that for you. But. I, I will add uh, one more thing, and that was there were two different families that had three generations. And so we got to see grandparents, parents, and, and the kids uh, get to go out, to get to see them go door to door to deliver food to shut-ins, uh, to do witnessing, to do different ministry. That, it just was beautiful to see that. And then also I wanted to say it was a great setting for kids to be in a multicultural environment, to think, man, you could drive an hour and a half and to be with 11 different nations. So we, I mean, I could not list all of them because I don't, my mind doesn't work that way, but it was a wonderful time. You need to plan on trying to come next year. We'll do it again, Noel, as a family mission trip. Now let's talk about Peru.
crew team, if you guys can come up. So church, I just want to first say thank you for sending us. Um, this was an incredible trip. Um, so it was Pastor Jared, John, Alea, Levi, and myself. Um, the purpose of our trip was to go and um, serve and encourage one of our mission partners, the Webb family, as well as their ministry, Genesis Church. Um, and so we went um, to help at their expansion conference, um, which was a discipleship conference to impart knowledge but take it one step further of applying that knowledge. Um, and so that was kind of overall our goal, um, and it was incredible. So I'll kind of walk us through the trip. You guys saw uh, that kind of covered the first half of it. Um, so we arrived after some long travel, uh, long layovers in the airport, um, and got to spend time with the Webb family. And um, then we spent two days really prepping for the conference. Uh, conference started Friday night um, and then was all day Saturday. Um, Alea and Levi were just like the servants to fill in the gap for all the last minute needs that came up. And it was incredible watching them just serve at this conference and to jump in when they saw a need. Um, so whether that was helping with self-defense and being the other person there, having intentional conversations, watching the kiddos as parents attended a session, helping out with food, um, all those little details that kind of get overlooked. They just jumped in and served. Um, and then John got to teach um, and share what it looks like to have a job that's kind of like in a world setting. It's not a church staff position, um, but how to serve and do that job for the glory of the Lord. And then also how to still serve the church faithfully without being on staff. Um, and then Jared spoke to all the men at the conference about what it is to be a man of God. Um, and then I had the opportunity to share about um, conscious discipline and how God created our brain um, and how that impacts how we discipline children as parents and as educators. And so it was just an incredible time. Um, and so that was all day Saturday. Sunday we got to um, spend the day at their church, attending their services as well as serving kids ministry. Um, and then Monday and Tuesday, a time of some relaxing, uh, recovering from the busy weekend, um, as well as doing evangelism nights. Um, and these nights were really cool to see. Um, there are cell groups, which is kind of our version of a life group. There's three of them that were in a neighborhood. Um, and so they took this event and like kind of owned it. Um, they planned everything, bought all the materials needed, went out door to door to tell their neighbors that we would be coming um, and it was just like a big block party, basically, in their neighborhood, um, where they got to share their testimony, share the gospel through a drama, um, mm -hmm. and just have fun, laugh, um, and make connections with people. And so, an incredible trip. Um, for me, I'll kind of quickly just share what God did um, in my life on this trip. A lot of you guys um, have heard my testimony from last year, and how the Lord um, did a great healing in my life while I was in Peru. And so this trip was just an opportunity to um, highlight God's faithfulness and to return back to the place um, and to give him the glory for my testimony um, with the people that were there with me when it happened. Um, and then also a big part of what kind of you guys saw in the video was just that unity and the community. Um, so we were able to go, and we also partnered with a church in Texas, and then we partnered there in Iquitos with Genesis Church. And so three church bodies coming together with one purpose, and that was to glorify the Lord and to share the gospel. Um, and so the ability just to connect, have deep friendships, make new friendships um, around the world, because um, we all are united, because uh, we have the same spirit in us. And so... It was an incredible trip. Um, I'm going to have John share a little bit about his story. Thank you. Uh, so my name's John. Uh, one of the, the things they asked me to do was lead a, a group of, of the church members there. Uh, the lesson was a Christian businessman, which I don't think of myself as a businessman to begin with. But I guess culturally, they have an idea that if you work, then anything for the church is for church staff for them to take care of so there's not a crossover 
and stuff like that. And so I just got to share how I get to, I'm lucky enough that I get to play bass in church, I get to do sound, I lead a, lead a small group, and all these things that I do, even though I do have a full-time job and I get to work that, but it, it's not, a, there's not two Johns is what I shared with them. There's not one at church and there's not one at work. There's, I'm just one person and I get to do both. And again, with work, there's a lot of corruption and stuff in their jobs. So I just wanted to share with them that, you know, that person at church is the same person that needs to be at work also. So I got to share that with them. It was pretty amazing. It, it's a very young, young church. Uh, I don't know if I saw hardly anybody over 30 years old. I mean, this, this is really young church, and they are so eager uh, for knowledge of things of God. They're taking notes, and, you know, I lead a small group, and none of my people in my small group take notes. <laughs> Josh? I'm just saying. I'm just saying, but it was, you know, it's very encouraging. This, and Jared's like, this kid took two pages of notes. And I said, he's got more notes than I had for myself to give this whole thing. <laughs> so, but they're so hunger and so eager for this, for this knowledge of God. And it, it's just really, and, and I got to go to uh, Jared's uh, uh, class and Jess's and some of the other uh, ones from the people from Texas. And it's that way throughout the whole conference. They're just, they were there to learn what God wanted them to learn. And they, they paid for this conference. And so they, they paid to go to this and, and they spent their time seeking God and what he wanted to learn. So I thought it was really encouraging just, just for myself, just to, do I have that passion sometimes for whenever I come to church? Do I really seek the things that God really wants me to? Uh, and then the other thing that Jess was talking about, the two outreach nights, we went to those. And what amazed me is they're, 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 the church events, but like she said, they're the cell groups. The cell group did everything. The church staff was there, but the church staff was not leading the, the uh, testimonies. They weren't leading. They weren't, they weren't holding everybody in hand, walking them around, getting this event taken care of. That cell group took care of everything. I mean, they just got in there and did everything, which was amazing because you know, we come to church, and then we, we do an event, and there's a lot of staff that kind of leads it up, and then we're kind of there to follow behind them. But this was totally different. I thought it was really amazing as they were there to, to lead and do it, and then the staff was there to push behind them and help them out. So, yeah, it was a really good trip, and uh, I, I just learned a lot about myself and what I need to do when I got back home. So, Thank you all very much. All right, I was told that I could give a sermonette, so you ready for this? Turn in your Bibles to John chapter 4. John chapter 4, verse 13 and 14. Water, whenever you're on a mission trip, is a pretty big deal. Uh, we had a lady while we were there, uh, like Jess said and John said, there was another team that joined us from Texas, and so they brought in about 11 people and then plus our five. And so uh, one of the ladies who was there, if you're ever in Peru, do not drink the water. You, does everyone understand that? And this was a country lady and uh, just good old country roots. And so she went into their bathroom, which is not the same as our bathrooms, and was thirsty. And so she thought she would just take a handful of water. And it, could, it turned out about like you could imagine. So we were one person down for the next couple days. But water is important. What I heard this illustration while we're there, so I'll try to make this quickly. But Jesus here at the woman, uh, with the woman at the well in John chapter 4. Verse 13 and 14 says this, Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. Now, that, that is the illustration of this woman who drank this water. It did not give her the results that she hoped for. I'm sure in the moment it satisfied a thirst, but the rest of the week was turmoil because of that. But Jesus says, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water that I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water that I give will become in them a spring of water that wells up to eternal life. This woman is at the well. She's thirsty, but she's going to draw water that will not satisfy her. And somebody gave this illustration while we were down there, and so I thought I would just use it today. Uh, it was, what is the driest place on earth? 
And I'm not sure what the driest place is, but we know what the hottest place on earth is. It's Death Valley there in California. It's the hottest place on earth. They recorded uh, 110 years ago from this very week, July 10th, 1913. They recorded the highest temperature ever recorded on earth at 134 degrees. It's normally, it's normal summer temperature is 120 degrees. And they get about two inches of rain per year annually. So annually, they get what we got on Thursday night. Uh, Was it Wednesday or Thursday night that we got about two inches of rain? So that's how much they get the entire year. But here's the really cool illustration that the guy, uh, the pastor there from Texas used. There was this phenomenon that happened in 2016, October, uh, in October of 2016. It rained three inches that month, which was more than they normally get in a year. And it's a phenomenon that happens very rarely in Death Valley, but this is what Death Valley looked like after that. It filled with flowers. And you think about what a beautiful picture that is, that this very dry place, when it finally received water, it showed life. It's a great illustration of what happens to the woman at the well. She shows up to the well, she's thirsty, and Jesus is saying, this water is never going to produce fruit in you. It's never going to satisfy. Nothing will ever blossom there. But Jesus is the water of life. And when this woman, when she took a drink of what Jesus was, we would say in John 4 that she looks to Christ in faith, that the next thing she does is she says, I know a town that needs water. And what we celebrated today is this, that we got to take, what was it, 56 people, 21 for the first time, who said, here's what I'd like to take a week of vacation to do, is to go give water to a thirsty world. And I just want to say, church, thank you so much for having that type of mentality, going all the way back to Charles Dixon, standing on the roof, crying and saying, there are people who are thirsty in this community that need to hear about the water of life, who's Jesus Christ. Their their life is dry, and they're looking for things just like that woman from Texas. They're drinking things that will not affect them in the right way. So I want to ask you just as we have a little bit of time of invitation, number one, first, if you're here and you've never heard about Jesus Christ, I can tell you that he's the only thing that satisfies. He's the only thing that would actually bring life to your dead soul. If you've never responded to him, I hope that you would hear that message today and that you would look to him in faith and be saved. And then secondly, I would ask you, have you joined in bringing water to those who are thirsty around you? Have you made that kind of your ambition in life to say whether like John, whether I work at City Utilities or whatever I do, I want to be a part of delivering water to those people who are dry and thirsty. And then the last thing maybe I'd ask for invitation as the worship team comes back up is this. Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. If you're here today, we've got a a plant that actually Spring Hill gave us the, the day I came in view of a call my grandmother passed away. And I, I remember it just said a lot to me about this church. Miss Belinda, um, I, I think, is the person who organized it. But they sent us a plant when my grandma passed away. We have it in our house. It's the only plant we have ever been able to keep alive. So just a little testify there. Not going to brag or anything. But Belinda, it was a great pick on what plant it was. But its, it's limbs begin to droop when it gets dry. And that's the only reason why we can make it survive is it's, it's like telling us it's thirsty. And so we add some more water. And so I would just, the three things that I'd have you think of during our time of response is this. If you don't know Christ, Jesus is the water of life. And I would tell you that if your heart is dry, he is what you're longing for. And secondly, I wanted to just continue to challenge you. If, if you would take that as your ambition to say, I want to deliver the water of life to a dry and thirsty land. And then the last thing would be maybe you'd look like our house plant that's getting a little droopy and you'd just say, Lord, I want to thirst again for you. I'm going to say a word of prayer and then we'll dive into a time of worship and reflection. Would you pray with me? Father, I thank you that you gave us the water of life in Jesus Christ and that because of him, a spring of water wells up in us that's not just for our own heart, but for those around us. Father, I do ask that you would allow us to genuinely thirst for you and father we also ask you to create in us that promise that jesus gave to this woman a spring of life that would well up and flow out of us that we would begin to tell people around us about christ father i thank you for the work that you've done in this church and the work that you are doing father would you even as we read this verse today father would you allow us to do the work of the evangelist 
Lord, we love you and we thank you. We thank you for your goodness, for your love and your mercy. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.